Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. A quick note before we begin. Flash Fiction Podcast is now also available on YouTube. Check manowaker.com for a link to the channel. This week, Inside David by B.T. Laurie. With each line of code that he types on the screen, David becomes her. She grows inside him. Sola is her name. She's twenty-something, with almond eyes, black hair, and long bangs. Traumatized, unloved, afraid of what her own beauty evokes in men. But like all good video game characters, she can kick ass. David can't. He's all too aware of being a fat, middle-aged, balding man who has hidden behind screens his entire life. He lacks her spunk. She's brutal if she needs to be, though only for the right cause. She's beautiful. Almost too beautiful. David. He glances up from his monitor. Boss? Charles sits on David's desk, leaning against the gray cubicle wall. He makes that smile which he learned from business seminars. So I've been talking with the boys in the writing department. Charles is false on the surface, but genuine underneath. Like her, but Charles smells like cigarettes and office cleaners, whereas she smells like amber perfume and the sweat of training. Her skin is smooth as a 3D program can make it, but not plasticky. She tries to look threatening, but her eyes are alive and questing after mystery. David? He looks back. Charles' smile falters. They feel you're taking the Sola character too far. Too far? Yeah, she's just meant to be Max's babe, really. Someone to keep the teenage boys playing, you know. The writers don't mind that you fill her out, but... Charles goes on. Describing that the main plot of the game is Max taking down the Alliance and becoming a pirate king. Then suddenly he drops a bombshell. We want to make Sola a memory. A memory? David wants to return to the code, to her world. It all opens up for him when he dives in. What do you mean? We're thinking she could be Max's dead lover. She could show up when he's thoughtful, like uh, after a big fight. But they won't talk or anything. She'll just be in the sky, representing his memories, you know? David turns back to his screen. Charles looks at the clock on his mobile. You can still say a lot with the way she looks. David curls his lips. He had gathered pics of models who resembled her, made crude drawings of her hands, her nose, her feet. Frozen images. How can she grow when she can't move? I'll work on it, David hears himself say. Sola would fight back and he would help her. Sola squeezes Max's rugged brown hands with ivory fingers. Do you love me? Max is a pirate of the skies, with a huge chest, a thin waist, and the world's coolest dreadlocks. His rebellion uses old, souped-up technology to combat the Alliance's latest innovations. Max thinks she'll stay with him, but David knows better. They've arrived at Max's base in the jagged mountains, east of Doomstar City. Their Hamamamamo flyer parks itself behind them as they walk through a stone tunnel. The entrance hisses shut, cutting off the sky's warm light. Plasma torches ignite. Their purplish light gleams on the hero's leather-clad bodies. Max hasn't fallen in love with Sola. Still, he knows what he should say. Of course I do, baby. Ungrateful bastard, thinks David. She takes both Max's hands in hers. What do you love about me? His eyes are broad and brown, hers yellow with flecks of purple. He runs his knuckles over her cheek. A scar breaks their marble smoothness. Max should have charged her shield battery. David would have done it. The scar mars her. For a moment, Max thinks of what she'll look like when she's old. The thought repels him. That thought repels David. I love your spirit, he says. David would say that too, but he would mean it. She reads the thought in Max's eyes and turns away. I need some air. Max feels something is wrong, but lets her go. Keep watchful up there. Alliance patrols are rare this far out of the dominance, as you know, but it would only take one stray craft to give us away. 
The dialogue sounds forced to David. Too much obvious exposition, but it gets the setting across. The purple torches shine on her tight black clothes as she leaves. She moves a little oddly. An injury? No, a glitch. David will have to fix that. Sola runs up spiraling stairs molded from red stone. Then she's out on the roof, weaving among hollow stalagmites with weapons stored inside. She walks to the edge. There is no railing. The hideout's walls descend into turning mist, lit by the red light of twin setting suns. It is a 2D backdrop, less time to render, but it fits in well. All her training? For what? She doesn't care about taking down the Alliance. If even a hero like Max will drop her like a prism of spent plasma when she becomes disfigured, then where is love? Is love in the suns, she wondered, or in the stars? Is there a god somewhere above or within it all? She is most beautiful when she's tragic. But why would God hide from me, she wonders. Unhinged from days of fighting, her body aching, a childhood of abusive men rising up in her, her faith in Max's love broken, she steps to the edge of the roof. David drops the hard disk from fifty stories up, sniffling back tears. The black block shrinks until only someone with enhanced vision could see it. Not David. Not anyone in this boring world. Someone like Sola could see it, but she's inside it. In the city's relentless buzz, did anyone hear a crash as she died? Later that day, he stares at his screen, unable to work. That night, alone in his bed, his beautiful woman appears in his mind. Will you give me a new name? She asks in her silky voice. A scar marks her cheek. It makes her more beautiful, more dangerous. Luna, he says, reaching toward her. You're free now. This has been Inside David by B.T. Laurie. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. I'm C.B. DeRoge. Thanks for listening. Episode 0120, Production Copyright 2016, C.B. DeRoge and Manowaker Studio.